Senator Delphine on debate. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise in support of Bill S-249, the National Strategy for the Prevention of Intimate Partner Violence Act, sponsored by Senator Manning. This is an issue close to my heart, and I believe this bill should be sent expeditiously to committee. This legislation will require the Minister for Women and Gender Equality and Youth to develop a national strategy for the prevention of intimate partner violence. I will address the three aspects of the bill in the uh, usual cutter's fashion, its origin, its purpose, and its relevancy today. First, its origin. Senator Manning introduced essentially the same bill in 2018 with even the same number. Senators McFadden, Hartling, and Pate added their insights on the debate, and senators unanimously referred that bill, S249, to the Senate Committee on Social Affairs, Science and Technology. Unfortunately, the bill died there with the coming election. However, between the bill's first itineration and now, it has developed and improved. At second reading in 2018, Senator Hartling said that the need for a bill like this one was obvious, but it should be thoroughly studied at committee with involvement of the relevant minister and stakeholders. She suggested involving, involving women's groups across the country in the consultations that the bill calls for. This past June, when Senator Manning reintroduced the bill, he acknowledged Senator Hartling's concerns by updating subsections 3, paragraph 2 of the, two, of the thousand, 2022 version of the bill to include consultations with, I quote, representatives of groups who provide services to or advocate on behalf of victims of intimate partner violence, end of quote. As for the purpose of the bill, the heartbreaking story of Mrs. Georgina McGrath that Senator Manning presented during the bill's second reading certainly made an impact on me. Having a, form, having a former victim of intimate partner violence behind this bill reinforces its importance. Senator McFadden worried in 2018 about the proposed national strategies inclusion of the provisions around requirements for health professionals to make a report to the police if they suspect that the patient is a victim of intimate partner violence. Senator McFedrin discussed that this may not be in the interest of all victims and could compromise their charter rights to security of the person. Offenders who receive probation or short prison sentences could be quickly back on the streets and terrorizing their victims. And that is, if they are convicted at all, she quoted the jury stat statistic that just 40 said, reported that 40% of domestic violence cases result in a guilty verdict. This is a valid concern. However, the bill itself is not demanding mandatory reporting. Paragraph 3, sorry, sec, paragraph 3.2.D is only asking for consultations around requirements for reporting suspected intimate partner violence. It's opening the, the debate on it and not providing for it. Those consultations shall include victim advocacy groups and take into consideration the recommendations of a report that Senator McFedrin mentioned, the National Action Plan on Violence Against Women, and gender-based gender violence, written by a pan-Canadian group of anti-violence experts, including survivors, grassroots organizations, academics, and lawyers. As Senator Manning said in his speech in November, in November last year, I quote, I have learned that patients' privacy and the victim's fear of what may happen if a police report is made are important factors that need to be thoroughly discussed as we proceed. But in order to find possible solutions 
to this increasing problem of intimate partner violence in our country, we need to begin exploring avenues to find a way to assist those who so desperately need our help." End of quote. I agree with Senator Manning that the cloak of silence around intimate partner violence, again, I quote him, has created a transvesti, a transvesti of justice based on fear, stigma, and the absence of a law to protect our society's most vulnerable. End of quote. The bill, as it stands now, ensures that Senator McFedrin's concerns around victim privacy and consultation will be well considered both in committee and during consultations once the bill comes into force. I note two important elements of Bill S-249, the requirement for the Minister to set out a national strategy in each House of Parliament within two years, and the requirement for a progress review including recommendations and conclusions two years after the minister tables their initial report. These ensure accountability. The strict time frame and review requirement mean that the minister can adapt the national strategy more easily so we can learn from what works well and what can be improved moving forward. The bill's purpose is to create a national strategy for preventing intimate partners' violence, but we certainly want an effective one. These measures will help achieve that goal. As for, as for my final point, the bill's relevance today, it is sadly more relevant than ever. According to a 2018 report published on Statistics Canada website, more than 12% of women had experienced intimate partner violence in the last year. That number more than doubled to 29% for young women aged between 15 to 24, victims of violence by their partner. Moreover, in Canada, more than 127,000 Acts of police reported domestic violence took place in 2020-21, with women and girls representing 69% of all victims, according to Statistics Canada. And we know that those that go to the police are just a small portion of the victims. Dans ma province, la situation. My province also has a, a bad track record. SOS Violence Conjugale, which is an organization in Quebec that has, has, has been working since its establishment and has received over 800,000 calls for help, and it received 23,000 calls a year. And even though the numbers don't uh, it may increase, it doesn't appear in a, a, an average. There were 17 women killed in Quebec in, in 2021, a record for Quebec. In 2022, there were 13, uh, 13 women died and six children. This is unacceptable. And so the Quebec government uh, ad adopted a, a new strategy to counter sexual violence and domestic violence and to rebuild trust. In the document by the government of Quebec, which is called the Integrated Strategy, it highlights that it was a work in collaboration between a number of uh, government departments and organizations, and after many consultations with stakeholders on the ground. The main elements of this strategy are the following. One, significant investments over five years to support organizations on working on the ground, including shelters for battered women, and centers to support uh, violent spouses. 
and money to support uh, victims of sexual assault. And for those who have saw uh, Radio Canada and other francophone stations, even in English, this the ad is quite shocking and really uh, pulls on the heartstrings. It talks about control between uh, uh, with a an overbearing spouse who's constantly questioning what their partner's doing and and she says stop you need help so it's an awareness raising campaign it's it's quite dramatic and it's very well targeted and i hope that it will be effective thirdly the establishment of a special uh court for spousal and sexual assault, where there will be not only hearing rooms for Crown prosecutors and police officers, but also support and accompaniment services provided by uh, specialists who focus on uh, spousal and sexual assault. Four, a, a victim uh, compensation for victims of spousal assault a legal and finally a legal uh, center for victims and finally the establishment of a system for tracking bracelets for uh, those who have been freed when the judge uh, grants that f their freedom it is a an integrated government strategy at the federal level that we need now. I am very pleased that Senator Manning is proposing this approach in his bill. In response to Senator Zodat's work, through the calls for justice of the final report of the national inquiry into missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls, call for justice 5.3 reads, and I quote, we call upon the federal government to review and reform the law about sexualized violence and intimate partner violence, utilizing the perspectives of feminist and indigenous women, girls, and 2SLGBTQQIA people. End of quote. Bill S249 will also honor the call of so many organizations reports and stakeholders for consultation and reforms related to preventing intimate partner violence. It will bring together government ministers and representatives with victim advocacy groups. It will be the first step in creating solutions that will give so many of our fellow Canadians a choice where none exists today. What happened to Mrs. Graff and too many others shall never happen again. Colleagues, I ask you to join me in supporting Bill S249 at second reading in order to send it to committee for careful review and amendment if necessary. Thank you. Merci. Miigwech. Senator Dupuy, do you have a question? I would like to know. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Would Senator Delphon accept a question? Of course, Madam Speaker. We have one and a half minutes. In 30 seconds, Senator Delfon, thank you for your speech. Do you think that this bill, which is multifaceted, is one that should be studied by a number of committees simultaneously, whether it's the legal affairs, uh, social affairs, indigenous peoples? Senator Delfon, thank you, Senator Dupuis. That's an excellent question. Yes, even a suggestion that I think she is making to the chamber, because violence varies, and there is an aspect, a legal aspect, a social aspect, and also uh, an aspect that affects Indigenous women, because we know that the number of complaints is two times higher, and the risk is much higher in remote communities. So the needs vary based on the cases, and committees could uh, study the, these different cases of family violence. Thank you.